Hello doctors, today let's talk about ECG physiology. If you see here, today we will mostly talk about the normal aspects of the ECG and I will also teach you how to read a ECG. ECG means electrocardiogram. It is a device used to measure the electrical activity of the heart that is electrocardiogram. Now let's jump into the topic. What we will be discussing today? We will see about the electrical conduction of the heart. Then we will see we will see about the ECG leads, where to place them, what do they mean, we will see about it. And we will talk about ECG waves, mostly the normal waves. And also I will teach you the important and interesting part, how to read an ECG. Now if you see the electrical conduction of the heart, we all know that the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. The currents from the SA node then pass to the AV node, then they go to the S bundle, the bundle branches, then to the Purkinje fibers. The electrical activity is being generated at the SA node. It then passes to the AV node. During this, it depolarizes the atria. What do you mean by depolarization? It means that the atria will contract. Then after the electrical activity at the AV node, it then goes to the bundle branches and then to the Purkinje fibers causing depolarization of the ventricles, which means the ventricles will contract. Then the ventricles will repolarize, they will relax. The if you see the direction of the passage of current is like this towards downwards this is the normal direction of passage of current if there is any deviation in this there could be any problem now let's talk about conduction velocity velocity means speed conduction velocity speed of passage of electrical activity we saw that electrical activity passes from SA node to AV node to bundle branches and Purkinje fibers. Now what, what about the speed of passage? The speed of passage of electrical activity is slowest at the AV node. It has a reason. I said the current passes from the SA node then to the AV node. In this the atria contracts. Then from AV node to the bundle branches the, the ventricles contract. If you see, the ventricles need some time to fill the blood. Only after the blood is being filled in the ventricles, the ventricles will contract. So, from the SA node, the current passes through the AV node, then it passes there for a while, waiting for the ventricles to fill. After the ventricles are full, the AV node fires. This causes ventricular contraction and the blood goes out. The electrical activity is fastest at the Purkinje fibers. It will help in the contraction of the ventricles. Now let's talk about the ECG waves. If you see this is the heart and this is the direction of passage of current. If in your body if the direction of the, your passage of current in your heart is in this direction your ECG wave will look like this. You would have all seen if the person is dead the wave would be flat. If the person is alive you will have these bumps and cones. Now let's see what do they mean. In the y axis we will plot electrical activity of the heart. If there is any electrical activity being noted there will be these changes in the wave. Then the x-axis will be time. We have studied that as the time passes the current will go like this. So the waves are being formed. Now let's see what do these waves mean. The first one, this first bump, this is due to atrial depolarization. The current from SA node passes to the AV node. This causes atrial depolarization. So there is this wave. 
then from the av node i said the it is the passage of current is slowest at the av node so we can see no waves here then after that the waves from av node have reached the perkin g fibers so we can see here ventricles have been depolarized creating these big waves now then the ventricles will repolarize if you see here all the waves are moving upwards it means positive deflection some waves we can see are going downwards that is negative deflection as i told this is the normal way or normal side in which the current passes in your heart normal direction in which current passes if in your heart if the current passes in this direction the waves would go upwards if the current passes in opposite direction the waves can go downwards this is why there is difference in these waves then this atrial depolarization is being given the name as p wave ventricular depolarization qrs ventricular repolarization is t wave the atrial repolarization is being hidden in ventricular depolarization normally it's atrial depolarization atrial repolarization then ventricular depolarization ventricular repolarization but the atrial repolarization is hidden in ventricular depolarization this wave being very large hides the small wave just to make things complicated we'll form some intervals if you see here this interval starts at p and ends just before the qrs this is pr interval then another duration qrs we'll see about the qrs duration then another interval starting from q and ending after the t this is qt interval this one this small bump can be u wave it can be seen normally or in some other pathologies now let's talk about more about the ecg leads if you see here these things pasted in this man's body this are ecg leads now you just cannot place any leads at anywhere each lead has a specific name and it has specific location to be placed on now what we use nowadays is 12 led ecg if you see this paper it has 12 markings these are the 12 corresponding leads if you see here these waves are pointing upwards but just see this wave and this wave both look same except these waves are pointed downwards i'll tell you why in i'll just tell you why in a minute this is normal now i told there are 12 leads these are lead 1 2 3 avr avl avf v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 now we'll let's see where to where are they placed and what do they do if you see i told there are 12 led ecg let's divide it into 2 6 plus 6 6 leads are placed in in a manner from top to below top to bottom and other six leads are placed in a direction at which cross section of the heart so six leads from top to bottom and six leads the cross section of the heart since since heart being a 3d structure we have 12 leads placing from every direction to note the activity of the heart if the leads are placed properly you will get the correct reading for that patient if you change any lead there could be no problem in the patient but your ecg could show some other problems so that is why it is important to know where to place the leads now for example you are working in the emergency department and there a patient comes you are being asked by your senior resident to place the ecg leads now let's see 
way to place them first take the uh, first know that the heart is where uh, first know the location of the heart and the direction in which the current passes then you have to place the avr lead that is augmented vector right this avr lead is being placed at the right limb then avl of the left limb then av av avl at the left limb and avf at the foot avr avl and avf then in between avr and avl there is lead 1 this lead is not being placed it's just the potential difference of these two leads lead 2 potential difference of avr and avf lead 3 potential difference of avl and avf then v1 is being placed at the fourth intercostal space in the right sternal right parasternal border in the v2 is placed in the fourth intercostal space left parasternal border and v4 is being placed at the place where we check for the apex beat that is fifth intercostal space left mid clavicular line v3 is placed between v2 and v4 v5 is being placed at the anterior axillary line and v6 at the mid axillary line now i told that few few waves are being pointed down this is because you can see here there are there are several leads placed at the several places each leads each lead looks at the heart from a different direction for example the current is being passed downwards but if you see avr it's in the opposite side so these waves are shown opposite that is pointing downwards so if in avr if the waves are pointing downwards with normal rhythm that is normal if you see here the avf lead 3 they are all in the direction of the current so you can see these are pointed upwards and are normal so that is why some of the leads are point downwards it's just because they are placed in the opposite direction of the passage of current now let's talk about the limb leads there are six limb leads as mentioned before lead avr avl and avf and their potential differences lead 1 2 and 3 these three are limb leads placed from top to bottom then there are six chest leads these leads are also called as precordial leads before the heart they are placed in front of the heart these are v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 and i just told their respective locations now let's see some special leads there are bipolar leads lead 1 2 and 3 bipolar means two poles if you see here lead 1 has two poles avr and avl lead 2 has two poles avr and avf lead 3 has two poles avl and avf these are just the potential difference of two leads so they are called as bipolar leads all other leads are unipolar leads let's see about what do each leads uh, do in the abnormal patterns of the ecg like if you see lead 2 lead 3 lead avf are placed in the inferior side of the heart inferior side of the heart so if there are any problem in the inferior side of the wall inferior uh, wall of the heart these leads will be abnormal the inferior wall of the heart is supplied by right coronary artery so if you have a myocardial infarction of the right coronary artery the inferior wall leads would show the abnormal patterns in the ecg 
so we can easily know that which artery is damaged and which part of the heart is damaged that is the significance of ecg then lead 1 and avl these are at high lateral wall which is supplied by left circumflex artery then v1 and v2 they are the septal wall supplied by left anterior descending artery v3 and v4 at anterior wall of the heart left anterior descending artery v5 and v6 at lateral wall left circumflex artery if you see here when there is myocardial infarction at any part of the heart that respective lead will show the abnormality in the ecg so we could easily locate which artery is damaged and which part is damaged and we can do the treatment accordingly to know mo more about the arteries and veins of the heart you can see my other videos let's see the important and interesting part how to read an ecg now imagine you are being posted in a government hospital and your senior doctor now gives this and asks you to read the ecg what you have to do first first calculate the heart rate now take any lead and you know this is the qrs and this is the r wave between the two r wave you must calculate how many big boxes are there the formula is 300 divided by number of big boxes between two r waves if you see there are almost four boxes here one two three and four so 300 by 4 this patient has heartbeat of 75 beats per minute this is normal but if there is heartbeat is less than 60 you can be heart block or if it is more than 100 it can be arrhythmias so the normal number of boxes to have in between two r waves roughly is three to five boxes if less than three big bo boxes it can be heart block if more than five big boxes it can be arrhythmias here in this patient we have four boxes which is normal now next next you have to determine determine the rhythm if you see here between the two r waves the distance should be equal if you see here one two three almost we have four big boxes in between these two r waves now here also one two three four we have four big boxes we have to check it here all if everywhere we have equal number of distance in between then the rhythm is normal now what do you mean by a sinus rhythm normal sinus rhythm means the heart rate should be in 60 to 100 and p wave this p wave is followed by a qrs and before the qrs there should be a p wave and the rr intervals should be regular if you have all these you will be called as a normal sinus rhythm then if there is some pathologies you can have sinus arrhythmias, junctional rhythms, idioventricular rhythms these are just rhythms originating from somewhere else not, than the, uh, not in the SA node there can be rhythms starting from AV node and bundle of his those are the abnormal waves, abnormal rhythms this is the criteria for normal sinus rhythm then after knowing the rate and rhythm let's see the intervals if you see this is the normal wave of an ECG in this small box equals to 40 millisecond I said earlier that as time passes by these waves will, will be drawn in the ECG paper by the machine this one small box equals to 40 millisecond if you see in a big box there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 5 small boxes in the x axis so 4 8 12 16 and 200 millisecond this small box is 40 millisecond and five uh, one big box 
which is equal to 5 small boxes so 200 millisecond now this is the P wave PR interval QRS and QT if you see the P wave it's starting from the P and ending at P so the number of boxes here is three small boxes so three small boxes means less than 120 millisecond each box is 40 millisecond so three boxes normal P wave should be less than 120 millisecond now if you see the PR interval there are five small boxes five small boxes means it should be less than 200 millisecond then the QRS has three small boxes so normal QRS duration is less than 120 millisecond if you see the QT interval it has almost 10 small boxes so normal can be less than 400 or less than 440 is also accepted now next we should determine the axis now we have the heart rate the rhythm and the intervals now let's see about the axis this is the heart and this is the direction through which the current passes normally now let's draw this x-axis and y-axis if you have four quadrants let see that this wave is in this quadrant so this must be normal let's mark the angles 0 180 minus 90 and plus 90 the normal wave accepted is normal axis accepted is less than uh, in between minus 30 and plus 90 if the vector is in between this minus 30 and plus 90 it is normal axis but if the vector is, is between minus 30 and minus 90 this is left axis deviation this can be caused by many prop many other pathologies then if the axis is between plus 90 to plus 180 it is right axis deviation you know just imagine if the vector is directly opposite in this direction this is extreme axis deviation that is in between plus 180 and minus 90 so remember that normal axis is in between minus 30 and plus 90 now let's see how to determine the axis now you, all you have to do is see these two leads lead 1 and AVF the foot lead just see here what you have to do is calculate the amplitude amplitude means in this direction calculate how many boxes are there if you see in this wave there are almost nine small boxes now here there are many box many small boxes in upward direction but there are few small boxes in downward direction in upward there are 15 small boxes in low side there are 4 small boxes what you have to do is subtract 15 minus 4 so the amplitude of lead AVF is 11 and amplitude of lead 1 is 9 now just apply this in this formula this is the formula to determine the axis 90 times AVF lead 1 plus AVF 90 times AVF is 11 and lead 1 is 9 plus AVF is 11 90 times 11 divided by 9 plus 11 so the axis is 50 degrees now if you plot this 50 degree in the diagram before it falls under the normal axis minus 30 and plus 90 but if you see this method is quite taking a long time you can do this in an emergency situation so let's see how to easily crack this up now, all you have to do is just take lead 1 lead AVF and let's interpret if the lead 1 is positive I mean if it's in the upward direction and lead AVF is also in upward direction then it is normal axis 
if lead 1 is positive and lead 2 lead AVF is in negative direction facing downwards this is left axis deviation if lead A1 is negative side and lead AVF is positive this is right axis deviation if you see the lead 1 is negative and lead AVF is also negative if both are negative this is extreme axis deviation know this table well so that you can easily interpret the axis questions now the last one check for ST elevation and ST depression we all know that whenever a patient is having myocardial infarction this ST can be elevated or depressed it depends non ST elevated MI or ST elevated MI so in pericarditis all the leads will be elevated that is the difference from MI in MI as I said before only specific leads that are damaged will be elevated but in pericarditis all the leads will have this ST elevation if you see here this is the ST segment this one it should be flat this is ST elevation this flat segment is lost and it's elevated this is ST depression again the flat segment is lost now let's interpret this basic ECG this one has a small problem in it try to identify it if you see here you can see ST elevations in lead 2 and lead 3 and lead AVF what I have said before if lead 2 lead 3 and lead AVF are having ST elevation it can be a problem in the inferior wall and the damaged artery or the blocked artery is right coronary artery so you will have to intervene this right coronary artery that's how you use a ECG now we will end this discussion by interpreting a small ECG now you have been given this ECG by your seniors now try to interpret it you are in the hospital setting just as soon as you get the ECG you just check if the, this ECG belongs to the appropriate patient and just know about the chief complaint and history if you see uh, when you start interpreting just see first determine the heart rate see here between the two RR interval this patient ha it has more than three small bo three big boxes almost three and a half big boxes so the heart rate should be approximately uh, around 90 90 beats per minute next the rhythm if you see here the heart rate is normal there is P wave after that QRS and if you see the RR intervals this is three and a half big boxes three and a half big boxes three and a half big boxes so the RR interval is regular so this patient has normal sinus rhythm now let's see the intervals if you see the P wave it's almost uh, in within three small boxes so less than 120 milliseconds normal and PR interval is within five small boxes that is normal and this QRS is within three small boxes less than 120 milliseconds that is normal and this QT interval in less than 440 milliseconds that's normal in this compute you may try to zoom in and see it now for the axis I told that you, all you have to do is just check two leads lead 1 and the foot lead AVF just remember the table I mentioned earlier lead 1 shows upright lead AVF is upright so this patient is having normal axis that is between less than minus 30 and plus 90 now check for ST elevation and depression here clearly you can see any elevation or depression 
but be careful that you may think this is ST elevation. But that is not true. If you see the ST segment, it is flat. As I told before, if there is ST elevation, this flat segment would be lost. So this is a patient with normal sinus rhythm. This is a normal ECG. This is how you interpret an ECG. Now let's see some abnormalities. We'll just tell the names here and we'll have a separate discussion on these abnormalities with separate ECG strips. Now mostly you'll have arrhythmias showing up in ECGs. What are the types of arrhythmias? It can be SA nodal disorders, AV nodal disorders, SVT, supraventricular tachyarrhythmias, ventricular arrhythmias and premature beats. These are some important conditions to be noted. And other ECG disorders like bundle branch blocks, pericarditis, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, Brugada syndrome and MI changes, ARVD, electrolyte changes. All these are also important and we'll have separate discussion on this. That's all for today guys. Thank you.